Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How wonderful to be here and how wonderful that you are there. Uh, you know, I just came from my office a while ago and I was signing letters to some of the viewers and, and my heart just gets so full when I um, read your mail and I see your name and it's all over the country and it was just a, a just a great moment up there to look at some of those names and some of them are really familiar to me now uh, because you're regular uh, donors to the program so God bless you we're just so glad to be partners with you The Bible says that we are workers together with Jesus Christ couldn't get any better than that don't think so it's going to be a good show today I have an, another author with me and I love interviewing authors because they put a lot of effort into one subject that we can talk about and Jeannie Nigro has uh, been scheduled here before and something happened but she is here today. She has written the book Unshaken and the Bible indicates that no matter what we go through, what we face, that we shouldn't be shaken. The Apostle Paul had a litany, what you call a catalog of catastrophe and if I'd go through it one by one, you know, like being stoned and left for dead and all this kind of thing, shipwrecks and uh, all the, um, just the awful opposition he got trying to build a church. But he said, none of these things move me. And we need to take a lesson from that. And so my f new friend Jeannie has written this book called Unshaken. And guess what? We were having a conversation and she said, she wrote the book Unshaken and then everything started to shake. So I'm anxious for you to meet her because I think you'll certainly relate. And I'm going to join Stephanie for uh, a recipe that's called Easy Cheesy Biscuits. And they are smelling good here because uh, they actually have some garlic in them as well. We'll show that to you after I offer you the book Never Say Diet. This is by Chantel Hobbs. She lost two hundred pounds and kept it off so all of you who just dying to lose those 10 pounds I think that she would be a very good source and she goes through everything of this very very complete book on uh, weight loss and it is yours if you'll just uh, contact us uh, for that gift of at least uh, $15 that includes your shipping and handling that's a bargain friends you can absolutely be sure of that if you use your credit card, call 1-800-229-0059 or um, write to us at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And as we begin a new year, everybody's talking about 10 pounds they need to lose. Is that not correct? That is correct. The gyms will be full next week. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, and all of the resolutions. Yes. Well, this girl, you've been giving an update on... Mm -hmm. Your, how long ago did you start? September, and we're in December. Yes, mm -hmm. and she went on a weight loss plan, and she is looking so good. 28 pounds. 28 pounds. I'm proud of you because Thank it's you. no small. I'm proud of me, too, actually. No small. <laughs> did your husband say anything? Uh, yeah, he says you're done. Let's oh. stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, this is a different kind of biscuit. Yes, this is a drop biscuit. I love making biscuits, but I hate the rolling and all of that, so mm -hmm. drop biscuits mm -hmm. are the answer. Mm -hmm. So we have three cups of flour. We have three teaspoons of baking powder. And the way this is designed, it's a big biscuit. Yes, a tablespoon of sugar. We have a teaspoon of salt. And, and I am the official in charge person of a spraying yes, pan. Yes, over. And then we have three quarter teaspoon of cream of tata. What is that for? I looked it up because oh, I was afraid to ask me. I've never known what cream of tartar it is or what it's tartar. for. Tartar. Tartar. Tartar? Yes. Um, it adds an acidic element that helps it be fluffy. There you go. Where are you going to get that kind of right? information? I'm sure it could be sa said more eloquently. But it's eloquently. tartar. 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 No, let's see. Tartar. I thought that was steak tartar that's raw. I, I don't know. I'm just telling you what Maybe that's a typo. I don't think it's a tartar. We have a viewer out there who will set us straight on I this. I think Bert could set us straight. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, um, oh wait, I have butter. I have cold mm -hmm. butter. And we, I tried using a, the butter cutter in her. Mm -hmm. I am full of good words today. I'm going on vacation. Yes. Can you tell? <laughs> 
Let's see. Uh, she is leaving in less than three hours. She's so she's so brave to tape shows on the Friday before I leave for two weeks on vacation because <laughs> she my will not, brain is already on vacation. She'll not be using any brakes as she leaves. She said, "No brakes." Going to hear the tires squeal. out of the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I tried to use a cutter in her. Uh, my brain is <laughs> But it's time is, for you to go. This is just easier. Just use your fingers. Just use your fingers. <laughs> and if you want to put that cheese and that garlic in here, I can do it all all at the same time. Thank you. Because you, you want like coarse little, um, you want the butter all broken up. No. Okay. Oh, that garlic smells so good. So this reminds me of like red lobster biscuits, which you love. Yeah. So I can't wait to hear what you say about. Well, when I are. when I go to Red Lobster, which isn't often, but I'll sit down and say, "Bring me some biscuits." Yep. Right now. Bring I'm me. Arsene Rippy. Bring me biscuits. Oh yeah, That's right. That's what she says. And they <laughs> right. go in the kitchen. They're like, I don't know uh, who she thinks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what these would be good with? Everything uh, but what. Uh, just a good hot bowl of soup. Yes. I mean, because these are going to be big biscuits, and you don't want more than one. But we're actually taping another show today, and we're making soup, so this will be a good. That's combination. really good thing. You actually put this like all together, unlike what we taped the other day yeah. when you didn't put it all yeah. together, yeah. and we had yeah. a diet expert on, and we made turtle cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> Not okay. good thinking. So let me rinse real quick. And. While she's finishing that up. And I'm just putting in a cup and a quarter of milk. It's a really, really thick it's, consistency. This is one of those you need to have a, a strong right arm. It's a, it's a big recipe, too. Um, look at the size yeah, of these things. Yeah, you could cut those so in you, half and easily yeah, make Yeah, you, you could make those. Um, there's 12 there. You could make 24 out of it, yeah, actually. Easy. But so you the important it. thing is, what do they taste like? Exactly. Oh, perfect. That make your meal, really. Really, are they, I mean, what's the consistency like? I, that's what I want. They're know. very fluffy. Yeah? Mm hmm Yeah. That's the cream of ta-ta. And the, um, the bottoms of these are, are really done perfect. They're kind of crispy. Mm hmm So you can tell that the top of them, uh, they are done, but they're not real brown. Yeah. So. Okay, and then you just take. Mm. Two spoons, and you just drop. Mm -hmm. Super easy. And drop biscuits super delicious. Means drop. Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. So you can have this. For okay, what? For free. What if you just used the bisquick and threw in a little cheese and garlic? Mm, wouldn't be as good. I don't think. No, it would wouldn't be, be as good. good. Mm -mm. I could tell that. Yeah. Okay. If you want this recipe, it's absolutely free. Uh, Who email does it, us. Matthew? Who does it? Hmm? Your mom? No, no, thanks for Oh. <laughs> With this quick. Excuse us. We, <laughs> we're making a TV show here. Sorry. You know. She's talking to the camera guy. He was saying it tastes good. I was letting you oh. know. Oh, that okay. Bisquick tastes good. Oh, thank you, Matt. All right. Uh, I'm back to the we're show done. now. Yes, uh, email. <laughs> email us, and uh, we'll send it right back to you. And if you don't have a computer, write to us. And uh, if you can send a stamped envelope, that's fine. But um, we're glad for you to have it. And it's called Easy Cheesy Biscuits. Okay, stay with me. I want you to meet uh, Jeannie Nigro. And glad she's finally here. I think we've scheduled her a couple times and something would happen. So uh, you're going to love her. So stay with us. And the information is coming up on your screen for this recipe. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Okay, Jeannie, my... Um guest and author said, I was right on the tartar. 
Thank you. That's right. I was wanted to yell out, it's cream of tartar, <laughs> tartar. <laughs> but the truth is, uh, we had the printed recipe there, so they're the ones that made the typo. Okay. Wasn't wasn't us. Okay. So we're all in. All right. That's right. Hey, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Earthland. Yeah. So glad it worked out yeah. for me to come. Finally. Yes. Finally. Exactly. Um, this is not your first book. It is. It my is first your book. first book. Yes. Okay. Uh, unshaken, and uh, that's a word that's easy to say. <laughs> it's not easy to live, and uh, it talks about the things that can really. Um, come in and, and shake us up. Mm -hmm. um, and then I understand that you've had some real health problems and you write the book and then uh, another just whammo, you know, mm -hmm. to your family uh, for your 15 year old daughter to fall off of a horse and have multiple head injuries. And did you think, Maybe I shouldn't have written that book. <laughs> I sure did. I thought, Lord, why did I write this book? Why unshaken of all things? Couldn't I have written something about prima tartar? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Easier. It's good. Yes, exactly. But you know, ever since I wrote the book, it's been one thing after another. And as you said, and that's why I had to um, was not able to make it last yeah. time because of health issues. And those were starting to resolve at least some of them. And then uh, five weeks ago. Uh, my daughter uh, fell on her head in a horse jumping competition and uh, has multiple skull fractures and brain bleed and hemorrhaging and, and just, you know, a nightmare. But Yeah, and she's 15 she's years old. Yes. So, yeah. but <clears throat> I often think of the song Andre Crouch wrote, Through It All. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he takes us through things mm -hmm. and that's, that's kind of what your book is about. What was it that motivated you to write a book on this subject? Yeah, actually, Arthur, it was my fear of the end times. That of end times, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. So the book applies to, I think, all kinds of uh, uncertainties, yeah. whether it be in our world, you know, with the terrorism mm -hmm. and um, government and just all the things that are so, you know, watch the news and it's like, oh, you mm -hmm. know. And, but then we don't even have to watch the news, just in our lives, the things that happen um, that can change our life in a day, you know, mm -hmm. that we just are uncertain. But the uh, catalyst for writing the book was my fear of end times. You know, people talking about ISIS coming and terrorism a few years ago, just had a conversation with someone, found myself paralyzed in fear. I literally could not um, walk. I didn't want to send my daughter to school. You know, I didn't want to leave mm -hmm. the house because it was just, why even should I go on teaching if, if this is going to happen anyway? And, and that sense of um, God not being with me. I think of God just uh, kind of waiting it out mm -hmm. until Jesus comes back and, and, and just kind of uh, stepping back and, and not protecting me. Yeah, now your book was a surprise to me uh, because I thought it would be more on what we've just discussed, but actually you talk about the, uh, I, I thought it was, would be more like on a personal level and the things that uh, you've mm -hmm. been through that right. were very shaking, but no, actually- That's gonna be part two. <laughs> yeah, but actually it was on the, um, the book is on the end times and we're gonna put her website up and you can get the book through the website and I'm mm -hmm. sure Amazon and mm -hmm. the- And Barnes and Noble. Normal and places. Stores, yes. Yeah. Now, you were formerly an organizational change consultant. That's right. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I worked in, um, in organizations and also in consulting firms, helping organizations to go through change, that were going through change. And oftentimes organizations will want to change their culture, uh, maybe be more uh, open communication, be more team-based, um, help them to drive their vision and values through the organization and how do they build their vision and values into their performance so that not only the CEO and his staff know what the vision and values are, but every employee of the organization sees how they support the overall picture. So that's what I would do. I would work. Um, as Is a, there a place you can go to school to learn that? Well, there's, they have degrees now, I think, uh -huh. in that. My background in the education is MBA and mm -hmm. um, worked oh. in marketing and ad agencies and that kind of thing, and it ended up at uh, Very in, interesting. organizational consulting. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, you have a radio TV show called Facets mm -hmm. of the Stone. What is that? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the, the facets, facets, what's the stone? Yes, well, Facets of the Stone is, um, I got that from, I felt the Lord... Um, speaking in my heart about how we have to connect, and it's in the book as well, have to connect with all of the facets of God's heart. And so that's where Facets of the Stone came from. And when we connect or align our hearts and thoughts and actions with what is on God's heart, then we grow in intimacy with Him. Because the whole uh, crux of the book and in terms of the number one anchor for standing strong and unshaken mm -hmm. is, is that intimacy with Him and growing in intimacy with Him. And one of the ways that we do that 
is by connecting with all of the facets of his heart. So in the book, I explain the facets of his heart, even for the millennium, and what is on God's heart for the future, and how do we connect with that, and how does that help us to grow in intimacy with him? What is God's heart for Israel, for the biblical feast? Mm -hmm. um, and what's his that heart, was what was surprising. What's his heart for you? What's mm -hmm. his heart for other people? Yes. Uh, you talk about bringing Old Testament truths to life and relevance for today. Mm -hmm. What was it that got you interested in the Old Testament, the feasts, uh, how they relate to us today? Because well, that, that's a really a pretty interesting study oh, when really you get into is. it. It really is. And Arthelene, you know, of all the things that I've studied, it's through um, the book of Leviticus and studying the feasts that have brought the most healing to my heart of strongholds, of old lies uh, that I believed about myself and about God. So most times people see those things and they think, well, maybe it's just intellectual head knowledge. But I like to take these, um, sometimes we think of them as obscure or irrelevant truths and make them very relevant for like, how does that, what does that reveal about who God is? And what does that reveal about how he sees me? And how can does you that give, bring healing to yeah, me? Yeah, can you give an example of absolutely. one of the feasts? Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. Well, Passover is a great one because mm -hmm. Passover, I mean, I love teaching satyrs because there's so much you can include. And I love to weave in this whole healing strongholds mm -hmm. um, piece into satyrs. But for example, each of the, um, there's four cups of wine that, that we drink or grape juice in, in a satyr. And each one has a specific um, uh, purpose and, and relevance. For example, you have the uh, cup of acceptance. And so when I teach on that, is it's just all about how God accepts you. He died for you knowing you were going to mess up in the future. You know, his love for you has no dependency at all on your performance. I know we know that in our heads, but mm -hmm. yet when we mess up, we feel like we have to hide from God almost, or mm -hmm. like he's mad at us, or he's disappointed in us. Mm -hmm. And he's not, uh, because he loves us. His, it's like the sun, it just keeps shining, or a fire just keeps coming toward us. And so when I've... Um, allow that truth to sink in and, and, and say, God, show me what lies I'm believing about you. Because when we feel distant from him, there's always a lie that we're believing about him in our hearts. And, and he'll show me, well, um, it's maybe an old message that I received growing up, you know, that I had to be perfect to be loved or something like mm -hmm. that. And then I confess that. And, and so the, um, the symbolism of there's another cup that talks about your worth in him and seeing how much he values you and that you know, no matter what, your worth has to come from. This is all in the future. Seder? Oh, yeah. The way I teach it. Yeah, not mm -hmm. always. So I take the cups and I take them to a deeper um, level. Or mm -hmm. the fact, for example, that um, I like to show how every single thing that happened at Passover happened at a specific time, like this specific perfect mm -hmm. time, and was, um, was fulfilling something. Jesus was fulfilling something very specifically. And so that shows you that God cares about every detail of your life, every detail. There's nothing that we can't go to him about that. He's too busy or, well, that's, he's too big for, um, for this. You know, he, I was praying last night because I, I lost the backing of my earring, you know, and he helped me to find it. And I think oh, the hairs of my head are numbered to him. He cares about every single hair on my head. Well, do you think uh, for the most part, maybe the evangelical church um, should spend a little bit more time understanding oh, yeah. the connection of the rituals and the feasts and so forth, the Old Testament. Does, does, it, does it enrich oh. the, re the cross and the resurrection oh. and all that? Because it points to it. I believe that you can't really grasp what Jesus did for us without really understanding the, the Jewish roots. When I study and teach on Leviticus and the sacrifices, uh, and when I understand and that... Um, how repulsive death was because there were so many rituals that people would have to go through if they were exposed to anything. For a woman, if they were on their period, you know, they'd have to go through weeks and weeks of mm -hmm. um, ritual cleansing and things. So because anything that had to do with death couldn't come into his presence in the temple, yet that same God took on death because he wanted you so badly because you're so valuable to him. So that's where oh, it takes on this deeper mm -hmm. level. So it really, the feasts help us to grow in intimacy with him. There's special times of appointed times with him. And you know, Earthling, we're going to be celebrating the feast with Jesus when he returns. Mm -hmm. Throughout the millennium, uh, we'll be celebrating the feast. So it's practice for the future. When our bridegroom comes, we want to be ready. We want to know what on his heart and what are we going to be doing with him when he returns. Yeah. Did you uh, Did you grow up or were you part of what I would call an, a regular evangelical church? Or it, Not it, at all. No, well, actually, Because what, uh, what turned you to this? Yeah, well, I was raised Catholic. Uh -huh. but by the time I was in my 20s, I didn't believe in God at all. So I was more mm -hmm. new age. I thought God was just a, another word for truth or an energy force. 
And so I was living, I moved, I grew up in Ohio, I moved to California searching for truth, looking for the meaning of life, thought it was you went out to there. California? Yeah, thought it was out there, never thought I'd find it. They God. need it. <laughs> and uh, just <clears throat> really believed the messages of the world for the most, you know, lived my life by Cosmopolitan Magazine, this was back in the 80s, mm -hmm. and, um, but suffered all of the pain that comes from living that way. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point when I was 28 that I wanted to kill myself because it was so Couldn't hopeless. find it. Couldn't, Couldn't find, find it, it in, in careers. Change, you know, tried every job I could think of. Um, tried every man, you know, picking up men in bars. You know, that this is what the world tells you to do. Mm -hmm. and, um, and couldn't get uh, healing of that sense of worthlessness that I grew up with. And so I, um, I came to the point of wanting to kill myself and said, God, there had been a Christian at work talking to me for about six months. I fought it all the way. Mm -hmm. But um, at that point, I said, God, if you're real, take control of my life. And he did, and that was uh, about 28 years ago. And that was from someone at work? Well, that we Part of worked it. together for six months. We had nothing to do, and we would talk. How often do you have a job where there's nothing to do? They weren't ready for us when they hired us. And um, I fought him the whole time. They like, don't evangelize me. I don't want anything to do with Christians. I didn't want to go near a Christian. But he was a friend. He was a real friend to me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that was uh, how I came uh, to the Lord and, and then from that time really wanted to be in ministry but it's been a long road like I said 28 years and mm -hmm. lots of open door closed door and the Lord really refining me and he's got perfect timing for everything. Absolutely. If you just join me I'm talking to Jeannie Nigro and she has uh, this book has been out a few months Unshaken uh, a book that surprised me when I got into it and part of it's what we were just talking about is the emphasis on the Old Testament and how it connects to us today. Uh, another, and you need to get the book because we're barely uh, skimming some of the surface of the subject matter in it. But also you stress a lot intimacy yeah. with Christ and we hear that all the time. I know. But can you describe it so that the viewers can really have a better understanding of what it means. Absolutely, because intimacy is such, I had a hard time even with the book, you know, so how do I define this, you know? And you know what came to my mind, and I write this in the book, is I thought about high school, and when I would have, you know, a crush on a boy or something, you know, I mean, it sounds kind of corny, but yet we, we, we think about that person all the time. So real, yeah. We, um, we can't wait for them to call. We can't wait to talk to them. You know, we sit and write their names, you know, and that kind of thing. And <laughs> Mrs., you know, Jeannie, whatever. And, um, and it's the same way, you know, God, he's obsessed with us. And he wants us to be that's obsessed a hard, with That's him. a hard thing to believe. The, yeah, right. That he can't take his eyes off you. He can't stop thinking about you. Mm -hmm. He will speak to my heart sometimes and say, you know, I miss mm -hmm. you when you are focused on your ministry instead of me. You know, he's, you're beautiful to him even in your weakness. And so when we see God that way, mm. and, and when we don't, we have to ask him, Lord, what lie am I believing about mm. myself that I don't see you that way? And when we dwell on him throughout the day, we grow in intimacy and we thank him for mm -hmm. how he sees us. And, 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 but one of the things that I, I have a whole chapter on called intimacy blockers. Yeah, is, that was my next question. Yeah, how do we block that? Is, you know, I don't think we are aware at all at all the things that block intimacy with God. So my heart was to help to help you to be aware of what blocks intimacy. And you know what? Stress blocks intimacy with God. Oh, hello. I think that stress is one of those things where we think, well, it's 2016, soon to be 17. It's just a normal part of life and everybody's stressed. And if you're not, you're a slacker, mm -hmm. you know. But yet stress is really, to me, just a socially acceptable word for fear. Mm -hmm. And whenever we fear or stress, we're always believing a lie about mm -hmm. God or about ourselves. And so we need to look at, what am I believing? Am I believing that I have to hold all things together, that God's just watching, or that I um, have to make things happen, or that I'm all alone, I'm on my own, or that I'm not good enough, or just all mm. these, we have to be aware of these things because when I fear and stress, it's like, well, what am I believing? What lie am I believing? Or unforgiveness, or bitterness, or even, you know, when we're down on ourselves and we allow our own thoughts to beat us up. You know, you're a bad mom, you're a bad wife, all these things that... Uh, oh, I wish I was like you, or I wish I knew how to make biscuits, or, you, know, we, you know, whatever it is. And God, that's not his voice toward us. He's never uh, putting you down. I was thinking that song that, oh, man, the truth just uh, kind of hits you. Whose report will mm -hmm. you believe? Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Because uh, Satan's report is fear. Or condemnation. Condemnation, yeah. disappointment, discouragement. 
And when we even um, judge and condemn and um, look for the negative in others, mm -hmm. that's not God's heart toward mm -hmm. them. So that's what I was saying. Having God's heart toward yourself, having God's heart toward mm -hmm. others, you grow in intimacy with Him. But when you are critical of yourself or of others, you don't experience intimacy with God. I know, and I've known some Christians uh, who relish bad news almost. Mm. Uh, they've never gotten to that side mm -hmm. of the total freedom yes. uh, from that, that uh, God wants you to live way above the circumstances. Well, I think we don't realize mm -hmm. how that negativity and, um, and the, um, the fear and the stress, how that blocks intimacy. Mm -hmm. And once you're aware of that and, and you see that God has so much more, mm -hmm. that he desires such, he desires intimacy with you more than you could ever mm -hmm. desire it with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's really, that's the one thing that he asks of us. It's the one thing. And so when I get up in the morning and I think of all the things on my to-do list and I would start to stress out, like, how am I gonna, wait a minute, I don't have to do one thing. Mm -hmm. Focus on intimacy today mm -hmm. and he'll take care of all the rest. Uh, let me remind you again, the name of the book, Unshaken, and it can, uh, only help you if you get it and read it. We've had the website up there. I hope that you've uh, taken note of that. And uh, you're probably going through a shaking time right now. I, I would say at least 75% of the viewers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you do listen to the reports of the enemy and you listen to the re <coughs> reports on television. You know, it's interesting because I'm a news watcher and I like to watch liberal news and conservative news, so I get a whole mix of it. And I would say that 85% uh, of it is bad news, negative news, and then they might have a little sweet human interest story at the end where somebody was nice to someone and it's news. But that's, you know, you're a child of the king. Uh, you are a child of God, and it should make a big difference on uh, the way you conduct this life here on earth. Um, I often think of um, Andre Crouch's song, Through It All. Learn to trust in Jesus. Learn to, he's going he's gonna to take you through whatever you're going through right now. And I know your daughter's still mm -hmm. on that. But he's, yeah. And you're a mature Christian. You know he's going to take you through. Mm -hmm. You know that. Mm -hmm. uh, but for some of the viewers who think you're in a hopeless situation, you're not. You're not because he gives you hope for any situation and he promised to go through it with you what a blessing and you know it always has a purpose he doesn't waste your pain mm -hmm. he doesn't waste that shaking that you endure because that's the kind of God he is and he's going to use it for his kingdom and his purposes and I don't know about you but that's what I want hope you'll join me next time remembering there's no higher calling none whatsoever than that of a home keeper God bless you if you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.